going on everybody hopefully you didn't get too snowed in i just came in it's like 6 20 or so and uh sidewalks don't look great hopefully they'll get those fixed in the next hour or so but hopefully you didn't have any trouble coming in uh to school today hopefully uh you made a little money maybe some people were talking about making some money shoveling and whatnot so whatever we got another big one coming on friday night which shouldn't affect us here at school, but Friday night, like almost a foot of snow. So today, no new work, but I would like to read um, this. It's an excerpt, excerpt. So it's a um, small piece from a larger book. It's called Follow the Rabbit Proof Fence. We're only getting an excerpt. It's only a little bit. But um, I would like to read that today for the first time, go over some background if you watch the video on Monday, you know a little bit of this already. And then tomorrow, read it again without the background. There will be a Google form and then um, probably a vocabulary quiz on Friday. So two more assignments. Nothing new today, though. As I said yesterday, the remote day, check power school. There are two more grades in there. The speeches, those will be going in. Um, they're called persuasive techniques. Those will be going in today. And then um, by the end of the week, Harriet Tubman will be going in. A couple people, some people that are usually like finished with things first and the quality is really good. They're like, hey, I need a couple days. I'm like, that's all right. We could do that. So we don't want to go too quickly here. <clears throat> So let's um, talk about this uh, today. Follow the rabbit proof fence. Aborigines, remember? Aboriginal people. And we're talking about Australia, that big island in the Pacific Ocean. And so all the way up until like the 1970s, the Australian government was literally, we saw in the video, taking kids from their parents and trying to assimilate them. We've had that word before assimilate so weave them into australian society they didn't want anybody to be different so they took them brought them into um, schools where they could learn i guess for a lack of a better term learn how to be white i guess so this is about uh three sisters who are going to be taken we'll we'll find that out in the background and it's their desire to get back home to their families. All right. So not a very good story. I mean, I think it's a good story, but not a very nice story. It's pretty freaking sad if you ask me. But let's talk about the author here for a second. So her name is Doris Pilkington. You can see she was uh, born in 1937 and unfortunately passed away about 10 years ago. But she was an Aboriginal author best known for her nonfiction narrative. So nonfiction meaning not fake. Narrative meaning telling a story. Follow the Rabbit Proof Fence. Based on her mother's 1931 escape from Moore River Mission. And we learned about this in the video that this was kind of like a school, kind of like a church kind of thing where um, she mentioned Catholics would run these schools and they would take these kids and brainwash, I guess. We might say brainwash, I guess. That's, I don't think that's too, too uh, strong. There was even an act in the government right here under the Aborigines Act. See the years there. Approximately 100,000 children were removed from their tribal lands and placed in the care of the state. In 1940, when she was three and a half years old, Doris became one of these children. So she is writing about her mother and their escape with her aunts, but she was also taken in the 19 in 1940. All right, we're gonna skip through this because uh, you know this dictionary thesaurus. You know that, right? Dictionary. Look up the definitions. Thesaurus. Look up other words that are the same, like synonyms, and they might also have. Antonyms, but it looks like that is not there. Ooh, entomology. I'll pause here. Does anybody know what that means? The entomology of a word? It's kind of important. All right, it just means where does that word come from? Is it from the French? Is it from the Greek? Is it from the Latin? 
So the entomology of a word, where, where does, because um, very few words in English are actually come from English. We usually borrow from other languages. So that's entomology. All right, let's get into this here. Well, you can see there's a, a fence, maybe, rabbit proof to keep out rabbits uh, because they might have some crops that the rabbits like to eat. But if she falls out all the way to um, her house, maybe, something like that. Aboriginal Australians are native people of the Australian continent. From 1910 to 1970, many children of mixed aborig Aboriginal and white descent were taken from their families by the government in an effort to train them to fit into white Australian culture. Follow the Rabbit Proof Fence is a nonfiction narrative of three Mardu, we'll learn that word in just a minute, Mardu Aboriginal girls who escaped a government settlement in 1931 to return home. The Mardu are the indigenous or native people of the Australian desert. The other girls were now getting ready for school and the three washed quietly amidst all the activity. Bossing and bullying was everywhere around them. And there were cries and squeals of, don't, you're hurting my head, as the tangled knots were combed out with tiny, fragile combs. Out, oh, mommy, daddy, mommy, daddy, my head, yelled a young girl, who stamped her feet and tried to pull away from her torturer, an older, well-built girl who seemed to have adopted the girl as her baby sister. They performed this ritual together every morning before school. Come on, you girls ordered Martha Jones as she passed by their bed. School bell's gone. Don't be late on your first day. All right, we're coming as soon as we empty the toilet bucket, answered Molly softly. I'll wait for you then, said Martha. No, don't wait. We'll follow you. We know where the school is. All right, then. We'll go along. Come on, Rosie, she said, as she rushed out the door into the cold, drizzling morning. As, the other, as soon as the other girls left the dormitory, Molly beckoned her two sisters to come closer to her. Then she whispered urgently. I mean, I think you know urgently, right? Right? Meaning like it's urgent. Like you don't have to do that. You don't have to use the dictionary. Like it's, it's important. We're not going to school. So grab your bags. We're not staying here. Daisy and Gracie were stunned and stood staring at her. What'd you say? That's Gracie. I said, we're not staying here at the settlement because we're going home to jig along. You can see that seems like uh, it's a region of where they live. That's where their home is. Jig along. I hope I'm saying that right. Nervously, like we know this, right? Nervously, confidently, we know these. Gracie and Daisy weren't sure whether they were hearing correctly or not. Move quickly, Molly ordered her sisters. So it seems like Molly is the older sister, and then these two are the younger sisters. She wanted to be miles away before their absence was discovered. Time was of the essence. Her two young sisters faced each other, both looking very scared and confused. Daisy turned to Molly and said nervously, we're frightened. Don't know how to pronounce this, but that is definitely a word probably in their native language. We can go down to the footnote and we'll see that it means older sister. Okay. Older sister there. How are we going to find our way back to Jigalong? It's a long way from home. We are right here at the top of 14. I just want to make sure I was uh, showing the page big and not my face. That would be embarrassing. All right, 14. Here we go. Molly leaned against the wall and said confidently, I know it's a long way to go, but it's easy. We'll find the rabbit-proof fence and follow that all the way home. We're going to walk all the way? Asked Daisy. Yeah, replied Molly getting really impatient now, so don't waste time. The task of finding the rabbit-proof fence seemed like a simple solution for a teenager whose father was an inspector who traveled up and down the fences and whose grandfather had worked with him. Thomas Craig told her often enough that the fence stretched from coast to coast, south to north across the country. It's just a matter of locating a stretch of it, then following it to jig along. The two youngsters trusted their big sister because she was not only the eldest, but she had always been the bossy one who made all the decisions at home. So they did the normal thing and said, all right, did you do? That's probably wrong. We'll run away with you. They snatched up their meager possessions. So unfortunately, meager means they don't have a lot. It's not fancy. And put them into calico bags. You should know that, right? 
uh, and pulled the long drawstrings and slung them around their necks. Each one put on two dresses, two pairs of calico bloomers, and two coats. I, um, I just watch this guy on YouTube all the time. So calico, we know, brightly colored. This guy I watch on YouTube all the time. I was just watching him a couple nights ago. And he does uh, stealth camping. I don't know. Anybody know what stealth camping is? Yeah, so he does stealth camping. And um, he'll always try to find camouflage. And just a couple nights ago, he was using a camouflage sleeping bag or like a hammock. But then the strings for the hammock, the camouflage hammock, were like lime green. He's like, why would people do this? So if you're trying not to be seen, you know, calico bags, that's not good, right? You're going to be brightly colored. So anyways, just, just thought a little bit of that. Gracie and Daisy, remember the two younger sisters, were about to leave when Molly told them, wait, take those coats off, leave them here. Why? Asked Gracie. Because they're too heavy to carry. And if you remember um, at the beginning, it was like a drizzly morning, right? That's the weather. So they're probably not going to have great, great weather to walk in. The three sisters checked to make sure they hadn't missed anything then. And when they were absolutely satisfied, Molly grabbed the galvanized bucket. We know that word, galvanized bucket, remember? Like uh, treated metal so that it doesn't rust. And ordered Gracie to get a hold of the other side and walk quickly, trying not to spill the contents as they made their way to the lavatories. That could have been one of our words, but it's just another name for a bathroom. Daisy waited under the large pine tree near the stables. She reached up and broke a small twig that was hanging down low and examined it closely while the other two joined her. Look, older sister, like grass indie. I don't know. Do we know what indie is? Isn't it? So let's just look at this one too. So that just means yes in their language. I'm not sure why authors try to do that. It, it does sometimes kind of bug me. Like, I know, we know that they're not speaking their native language. If they were, we wouldn't be able to understand. But sometimes authors will just put little words in of the native language just to remind us that they do have another language. But for me as a reader, it just kind of like confuses me. And I often just like skip those words. I remember, um, and I don't know Spanish that well, but there was a book called Esperan Esperanza Rising. I think I read it, I don't know, maybe 20 years ago. I didn't finish it actually because like I don't I don't know Spanish that well. And I don't know, it seemed like every page had a couple Spanish words and just kind of like, you know, I wasn't in the mood to learn Spanish. So uh, luckily this doesn't have too many, but I think that's why the authors do it. Just like, hey, remember, they're not speaking English. They're probably not speaking English. Or at least they're carrying over some of the words from their uh, native language. So you can see right here, she says, yes. She said, as she gave it to Gracie, who crushed the green pine needles into her small hands and sniffed them. Probably got a lot of sap on them too. She liked the smell. And it was about to give her opinion when Molly reminded them that they didn't have time to stand around examining pine needles. Come on, run, you two, she said sharply and started to run towards the river. Many young people had stood under the same big pine tree and waited while someone went into the stable or the garage to distract Maitland. Who the heck is Maitland? Right here. They'll tell you. So the caretaker and stable man. So Maitland must be the person who looks after the stables. Then they would have a signal that the coast was clear and everyone would dash into the granary and fill their empty fruit tins with wheat from one of the open bags at the back of the shed. Some of it was roasted on flat tins over the hot coals. The rest was saved to fill initials that had been dug into sloping embankment of firm yellow sand along the cliffs. These were left until the first rain came. Then all the inmates would run down and inspect the cliffs. This grass graffiti revealed the new summer romances between the older boys and girls. But these three girls from East Philbra had no intention of participating. They had a more important task ahead of them. On they went, dashing down the sandy slopes of the cliffs, dodging the small shrubs on the way and following the narrow path to the flooded river. They slowed down only when they reached the bottom. Molly paused briefly, glancing at the pumping shed on their right 
where they had been the day before. Turning towards it, she said to Gracie and Daisy, this way. She ran for about 25 meters, crashing into the thick paper bark trees and the branches of the river gums that blocked their path. All right, how are we doing on time here? We are at about 15 minutes and we are not going to finish today. Not even close. So I don't want it to get too boring, but you may be saying too late. It already is boring. Okay. Well, yeah, some of these uh, stories I've heard from other teachers, like, uh, I mean, it's probably not my favorite, but um, all eighth graders are doing it. So uh, we'll do it as well. Um, but we'll have to find out tomorrow, right? Do they get home? So for the rest of the class, it's a short one, right? What I would do, love to do, give you time to work on anything you need to work on. Check power school. There were two grades that were entered yesterday. Have you done those? If you did, let me know. I'll check them over, put them in. And then if you haven't done the persuasive techniques, that's going in today. Check that out. Harriet Tubman's going in later this week and a vocabulary quiz. We also have the uh, study guide from Monday. So hopefully there's plenty to do. If it looks like people are working, well, guess what? Rest of the time is yours to work. I'll come around, help if I can. If it looks like most people don't need the time. It's probably unlikely, but we can get into a little Franken beans before the end of the day. All right. Half day. Still, it feels like a full day, right? Because it's just boom, 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 boom. Back to back to back to back classes without recess and lunch. All right.